Our next movie is named A Passage to India, and it's a very faithful screen version of the great novel by E.M. Forster about conflicts between the Indians and the British in the India of the 1920s. The conflict doesn't take place on a battlefield, but in the minds and personalities of the characters involved, Indians and British who have such deep and fundamental differences in values that sometimes each side doesn't even know what the other side is talking about. India at the time was ruled by the British Raj, and the British didn't mix socially with their subjects, but as the movie opens, a young British woman has come out to visit from England, and she says she wants to see the countryside. So a polite young doctor offers to show her the, fa the famous Marabour Caves, famous because they have an echo that no matter what you say in the cave, just comes back as the same kind of boom sort of noise. And in this scene, they've left behind the rest of their picnic party and are climbing all by themselves up to the cave. Did you love your wife when you married her? We never set eyes on each other until the day we were married. Oh. It was all arranged by our families. I only saw her face in a photograph. What about love? We were a man and a woman. And we were young. And that's a very important moment because that contact between the British and the Indians was just absolutely frowned upon. And later on, of course, an enormous divide opens up between those two people based upon the fact that they even dared uh, to associate with each mm -hmm. other. That was Victor Banerjee as the young doctor and Judy Davis, the Australian actress from My Brilliant Career, as the young Miss Quested. When they finally reach the caves, the doctor walks away for a moment. Miss Quested enters the cave by herself, and inside the cave, something happens. Exactly what happens is, of course, one of the great mysteries of Forster's novel, but it sets into motion a chain of events that leads to the doctor's trial on rape charges, or attempted rape, and a bitter confrontation between the Indian and British communities. I think this is a really great film, one of the best adaptations of an important novel that I've ever seen, and for the great director David Lean, who has not made a film for 15 years, not since Ryan's Daughter, and of course his credits include The Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago, this is a long overdue new film and a real milestone. Well, it's, it's, you know, you watch this and you see the great director once again and you yes. feel terrible because to miss 15 years out of a man's uh, creative life mm -hmm. is to miss, what, uh, uh, almost a third of his creative life. Right. We've lost many great films by him not working more frequently and that's a tragedy. But this is, a, you know, a great film. Mm -hmm. And I think you're quite right to say it's a great adaptation of a book. The standard line in movies is great books make bad films, bad books make good films. Here's an exception to it. I think with everything that's in the book, virtually everything, is, in, is contained in the film. amazing how much and the book the, is in the film. And the mystery, of course, of what is in those caves is what, separ what lifts this out of, uh, well, let's say something like mm -hmm. To Kill a Mockingbird, mm -hmm. which is a good film of its own kind about cultures clashing. But this now achieves greatness because there is a mystery. And you know, Gene, I was so frustrated when I came out of seeing the movie. Somebody said, well, I didn't understand it. They didn't know what? Well, they didn't understand what was in the cave. And to me, this is an example of how literal-minded some people are, that they yeah. don't understand the central mystery of the film. It's supposed to be a mystery. And to me, what's in the cave is the mystery of India. And the beauty of the film is how wonderfully David Lean is able to see and he's always been famous for his meticulous photography of nature and a mm. great epic scope and so forth. Every single frame in this movie is so beautiful I, and you have the story I it's thought so cleanly told. In terms of framing I thought he makes the river into a character just by the way he shoots it. Beautifully done. Oh, 
<laughs> you mean it's not part of your act? Pity. We could call it passage to India. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, I'm contort. Somebody help him.